This cabinet shuffle or some kind of big change to the cabinet has been coming for more than a year. Ever since the middle of 2012 when Bev Oda got kicked out of cabinet for paying too much for orange juice, the Prime Minister's people have been saying that major changes to the cabinet would wait until about the halfway point in the majority mandate now. And so that's what the uh, broader context of uh, this week's cabinet shuffle is. But there's also uh, more pressing and current problems. The, the Senate spending scandal, the ejection of a succession of conservative uh, senators and one liberal Senate, senator from their caucuses for abusive and perhaps fraudulent spending, and the weird business of Nigel Wright, the former chief of staff of the prime minister, floating a personal check to bail out Mike Duffy, the TV uh, star senator. Um, so Harper's got a major political problem that, this, Senate, that this, this cabinet shuffle is designed to address. It's interesting to see where he concentrates both action and inaction across three important files. Uh, the economy, parliament and democratic practice, and energy and the environment. He's moving a lot of action ministers to the economic portfolio. Uh, James Moore and Jason Kenney, perhaps the strongest young ministers that he's got, move respectively to industry and to a new employment portfolio. Kenny is uh, gifted at um, giving marathon sessions of interviews to many different news organizations. He has become one of the most eloquent uh, spokespeople for government policy, unapologetically conservative, but able to explain himself to a broader audience. And I think his job is basically to get the government's jobs message out. In action on democratic reform. It is hilarious that Pierre Poiliev is the Minister for Democratic Reform where Pierre Poiliev has been the MP for shoving it up the opposition's nose for almost as long as this government has been in power. Uh, he is tough, smart, belligerent, unapologetic, and uh, as far as I can tell, incapable of compromise. Uh, and so putting him in democratic reform, keeping Peter Van Loon, who has similar qualities and similar uh, uh, obstinacies in government house leader suggests that Harper does not think he's getting it wrong on democratic matters at all. In the face of a tough opposition, he's going to present, to continue to present, a tough government. And then on energy and the environment, Leona Aglukak has been the health minister for a couple years now, although I defy anyone to quote anything she's ever said about the healthcare system in this country. She's going to now continue to be unquotable in the environment, in her new job as environment minister. Whereas Joe Oliver, who is highly quotable as natural resources minister is going to continue making fun of Democrats who, who have a, an environmental bone in their body and, uh, and, and, and calling Canadian environmental groups agents of foreign uh, terror. Um, so moving the uh, uh, congenial but essentially voiceless Leona Aglukak to environment and keeping the ever quotable Joe Oliver in natural resources shows that on environment and, the, and, 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 and uh, energy as on democracy and the practice of this government in the House of Commons, Harper believes he's got nothing to apologize for. They're going to push hard on their economic advantage, which they believe is strong, over the Liberals and the New Democrats. In a nutshell, that's what happened this week with the Cabinet Shuffle.